If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. We've got Kerry Thomas back on as a guest today. Kerry came and talked to us before on podcast number 652 about equine athletic psychology and herd dynamics. Very interesting conversation. We've got him back again today to talk about the top 10 sensory soundness. I actually, Kerry, you know what? I'm going to get you to introduce the subject, okay? You've got so many, it's a bit of a tongue twister there. How are you today, Kerry, anyway? I'm doing good. How are you? Very, very well. Kerry, can you introduce the subject, please? Is it the top tens topic, sensory soundness and equine athlete herd dynamics series? So we're going to do a series, but, um, yeah, tell us about the sensory soundness and equine athlete. Yeah, you know, the the, the horse's uh, sensory system is one of my favorite topics. Yes, yes. uh, When we were talking about picking out a a, a top ten, the first thing that came to mind was the Mm. sensory system because Mm. it plays Mm. such such an important role in the horse's life, in every aspect. Yes, yes, yes. Before we start that, though, I just need to talk about International Horse College. So this is for anyone who'd like to work in the horse industry, but they're not quite sure where to start. Have a chat with the friendly team at internationalhorsecollege.com. We've got a wide variety of horse courses from the complete beginner through to the qualified professionals and students in over 20 countries. We should be able to consider your individual requirements and guide you in the right direction. So sometimes people come to us and say, I'd like to do a course on this. And then we say, look, sorry, we can't help you. This is the best place to go. But in the majority of cases, we can help people to get started anyway. Registered Training Organisation 31352. But Kerry, I'm, I want to go back now to this research that you do, and um, you want to talk about primary role of the sensory system in its basic form, like ID, radar system, etc. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, it's, it's, when I evaluate horses, and, and we do it in every discipline, yeah, and the equine athlete, one, one of the main things that that we have to look for is how efficient is the horse's sensory system, because that's an overlooked component, oftentimes and how the role that it plays on athletic performance and trainability and even even inner herd dependencies, mm-hmm. it all starts with the sensory system and how efficient the sensory system is in the different compartments. Yep. I think if anyone is not quite following this, they should go back and have a quick listen to 652 where Kerry did talk to us and, and went through and – you know, we talk about our own athletes and a lot of its mindset. And he um, looks at the herd dynamics and the mindset of the horse, the individual horse, not just about their pedigree, but the individual horse itself. And I think all of this is coming about. Um, it certainly opens up your mind, I think, to another way of looking at the best horse because we talked also about some horses that may have been race horses and not been particularly good at that. But then they excel quite well as a dressage horse or a jumper or performance horses in another area. Kerry, just we talk about the sensory sequences in three phases, the fabric that blends the outside with the inside world. Talk to us a, a little bit more about the three phases and uh, how it can blend the outside with the inside. Well, you know, the, the, the very cool thing about the, the horses, and when we're evaluating horses, and, and when I'm looking at a horse in person for the first time, yep. The very first thing I want to identify is how efficient is the horse's sensory system in the phases, and you know it's it, it's the it's the radar system for the horse. So the primary function of the of the sensory system is to identify stimulus in the environment, mm-hmm. and then it has to go into that. That once it's identified, it's funneled into the psyche, into into the psychology for interpretation, and the interpretation part is essential. Because the interpretation of the stimulus is in control of the response to the stimulus. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it has to happen very quickly and efficiently for a horse to have good body control. And it, I always look at it like, you know, the sensory system clears the way through the environment for the horse to pass through the environment. 
okay. safely. Okay. So what sort of thing, you know, you talk about the sensory system, but what sort of things should a horse react to? What shouldn't they react to? You know, I mean, sometimes we just want the quiet horse that doesn't do anything wrong, but is that the one that's not necessarily going to make the best race horses or do we want a quiet race horse? You know, just tell us a little bit more about well, this. Well, <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the, 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 every horse is going to react to stimulus, of course, in, in some manner. Yes, and okay. And it, 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 it comes down to, is, is it a controlled reaction or is it a knee-jerk reaction? Uh, you know, is, is, it purposeful okay. mo- yes. you know, is it purposeful motion or is it motion out of uh, fear or anxiety or uncertainty? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and there's a big difference between those two. And it has to, a lot to do with how a horse is responding to stress. And if they can't, identify and interpret properly if they have a, an issue on their own, <clears throat> they have a tendency to want to reach out to other things in the environment, i.e. other herd members, because yep. they're herd animals. So if there's something in the environment that they're having a difficult time uh, identifying and interpreting, they're, they're not sure how to react to it, they will about that also of other horses in their environment. And that begins to create a herd-bound type of psychology. Mm-hmm. Her dependency, mm-hmm. and this is important to understand if this is happening or not. Because if you're show jumping, or you're, you're going to be a dressage horse, or you're, you're racing against your peers, you know you want your horse to be able to uh, interpret the environment and respond to it properly as an individual. And the more efficient they can do that, the more efficient their athletic performance is going to be. Okay. Okay. Now. You want to talk about the six individual compartments of the sensory egg interpersonal spacing. Tell us the six individual compartments and go through that and just explain a little bit more about that within the horse. Yeah, I I break the horse down in in the six compartments and I I do this. If you're looking at the horse straight down, you have the, the both eyes in front of the horse, you're looking at binocular vision. Yes. And then as you go around the circle of the horse, the, then you have unocular vision on the right and left hand side. So that's, mm-hmm. that, that's your three. Yep. And then it transfers around the horse to, if the horse is standing with their heads straight, the ears begin to tick up on the obliques yes. around the side of the horse and towards the back of the horse on both sides. Mm-hmm. And then the rear part of the horse is really, they can't see it. They, they, they respond to that by a sense of feel, you know, and anticipation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's one of those areas where, some horses can interpret very well from, from the back. They, they either absorb stimulus all around or they reflect it all around or, or or they have a strong compartment, say, on the left oblique, but and, and they can identify and interpret properly that side. But the other side of the horse is not, not so much. You know, they can identify, but they can't interpret, so you get a response of uncontrolled physical motion. It could be the quick knee-jerk reaction um, and things like that. One of the most important parts of the horse's sensory system is their ability to sensory lead change. Mm -hmm. And that means a stimulus can go through the various compartments around the horse without causing, without requiring physical movement, unless the horse chooses to, of course. Yep. So uh, so, uh, horses, we talk about how important it is for physical lead changes, and, and it's certainly very important. But the psychology has to be able to do a sensory lead change as well. So that has, to, that has to happen whether your horse is standing still and something is moving through their environment. You don't want them to react to it unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. And if they're moving towards an object or through a crowd of horses or towards a jump, you want the horse to be able to essentially lead change that way as well because it works both ways, whether the horse is standing still or moving. The stimulus can be either moving or standing still, and it needs to be handed off through the sequence of the sensory compartments are for efficient physical motion. It's extremely important to okay. have that happen. Okay. Now, we're looking at the binocular vision. We're looking at the eyes, the ears, and I missed a little bit about the back end. Are we looking generally? Because I know that you said that they might react a little bit different on the right to the left, you know, sort of the horse might shy more on the right or more on the left. Right. Um, but I missed the back end. Correct, are we looking, yeah. what sort of things are we looking for there? Are we looking for, you know, a bit of a tenseness there or if we're looking as an observer? You know, you, in the back end, you're going to see that you're going to see the tail, you okay. know, the, the tail may move a little bit. Yep. You may see the horse. You, you can, you can really tell by body posture is, is the horse tensing up. 
mm-hmm. you know, are they mm-hmm. tensing up? Do they, do they look stiff? Do they yeah. look worried? They have that worried feel about them. Also, of course, if the ears double back and, and really reach yes. back, mm-hmm. okay, they're, reach, they're reaching back. They're, they're not, if the ears are pulling back and you're behind them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're having a difficult time interpreting what's going on back there. It is causing a lot of stress. Okay. And of course, the ears back is a sign of stress. Mm-hmm. And or sometimes you'll you'll get a horse that you know feels compelled to turn because they 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 can't identify and they can't interpret in another compartment, so they're going to be relying on visual. Uh, okay. They're going to want to okay. turn. They're going to want to yes. turn and look yes. at the you know just just like people are you know right handed or left handed for the most part. You know horses will have a they'll have a, a predominant sense that they'll always rely upon in in areas where they can't figure something out. So if you walk up to the left oblique of a horse and they can't sense you're there, they can feel you with their ears, but they really can't interpret you. You can, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they'll want to look at you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Yep. And, yep. and so that, that's, and that's, that's a sign that they're relying on vision. Now, sometimes obviously you have to know the difference between an automatic response and a horse looking and saying, Hey man, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I've yeah. had enough of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. That, there, there's a purposeful, there's a purposeful look and, and, and then there's that, that drawing, like, like, oh, my God, what are you? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, now, the identifying the efficiency and inefficiency as that sensory mapping, why is that part important? It, it's very important, and it's something that we do at THT, and, and it's, it's a fundamental part of all of the evaluation processes okay. that we do. Yep, and yep. Sensory mapping is going through and going around the, this, basically the egg around the horse, this inter- interpersonal space, mm-hmm. and... Mapping, mapping how efficient each compartment is in identification and interpretation. Okay. And I, I call it mapping because I actually have a, a piece of paper with a horse in the middle of it. And as I go around, I'm actually beginning to put marks on around this horse's sphere. Mm. And kind of like a dot dot, it begins, it begins to take shape and you have a map of the sensory system around your horse and, and where the sensory lead changes take place. Uh, okay. And yeah. How far in, how far, how close to them can they interpret mm-hmm. or absorb, and how far away? And it gives you this. It gives you their. It gives you their interpersonal, interpretational sphere. Yep. And it's extremely important to understand this because once you map the sequence out, it gives you a really good picture of how your horse is identifying the world around them and how they're responding to it. And then that that in part helps you when you're working with your horse, understanding the strengths and the weaknesses of the different areas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So when you say THT, you're talking about THT bloodstock? Yes. Yep. Okay. And so if people want to know a little bit more about THT bloodstock. I think they can go to thtbloodstock.com. Is that right, Kerry? What's the website for that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes, it is. Yep. thtbloodstock.com. And it's about behavioral mental profiling and Kerry is going through this now and just telling us a little bit more about, you know, so we can understand a little bit more about what THT does and why it's important to get this testing done for performance horses. I know you do a lot with race horses, Kerry, but this relates to all horses, doesn't it? It's not just about race horses. Yeah, it, 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 mm. it does. It, it's actually very important. You know, for the interpretation part of, of, the, of the mapping sequence, you know, time is everything. The, the speed of interpretation has to happen faster than the body's moving. Okay. And, and yep. in, the different, in the different compartments, you know, like a show jumper approaching an obstacle needs to identify and interpret and, and deal with it and enough far ahead of the body enough time to get over that jump. And the higher the jumps, of course, the more time that you need to have that jump interpreted. Okay. And so the speed, the, the speed and the rhythm of that interpretational speed and rhythm in the front has to be faster, you know, Two to three different times, or uh-huh. two to three different times faster than the body's moving. Now, okay. every every discipline re- requires different speeds in mm. different compartments mm-hmm. to be efficient. Okay, okay. dog horses require certain things. Show jumpers require certain things. Uh, race horses require certain speed. But time is time is everything. And when you when you understand the mapping and where the strengths and weaknesses are, how fast are and in, in interpreting, or how slow they are, you can begin to um, create mental exercises to actually increase the, increase that speed and, and strengthen the psychology e- exercise in these areas like like you would the physical horse you're going to ex- you can exercise the, the mind the sensory system the efficiency and by virtue of that you'll get a, a better athlete okay 
Okay. So understanding the first line of communication, how it affects her dependency and codependencies. So isolating the horse. So do you do this within the herd first and then isolate or do you isolate? We've got to find out about the strengths and weaknesses. Well, it, it, the, the whole point of the, the when you isolate the horse from the herd environment, yep. you know, you're isolating that, in, that individual. Yes. So you're okay. isolating the okay. strength and your weakness, you know, and then you're going to find out just how herd dependent they, they are in mm-hmm. certain areas yep. and, and when they're by themselves and how efficient they are. Okay. And this is important to know, especially before you make a purchase, because, you know, depending on what your goal for the horse is, I mean, most of the time you're buying a horse for uh, the purpose of some, some sport, not just to put out into the field and be a pasture mate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, under, understanding their, their strengths and their weaknesses and their dependencies and codependencies is essential because how is this going to affect their performance ability and their trainability? And, and it's, it's vital information to know. It's, it's just as important to know that as it is what the shoulder angle is and how good the hip is because holes in the sensory system, you know, they have weaknesses there, then those areas are going to be where the horse has a tendency to reach out to herd mates you know, in, by nature. That's just a natural thing for them to do. Okay. And this can greatly disrupt training, performance, or these, these things can crop up at uh, the most inopportune times, you know, at a, at a horse show, even for, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know you said that timing's everything. Is there like a ratio of time? Do you have a ratio with, say, right, this is going to be a show jumper, you know, they're going to be jumping this high, they need to be able to size it up the jump, you know, from this distance back, this is the reaction that they've got to get, you know, what, how, why. Tell us a little bit about the um, the timing and if you need a ratio and um, just a bit more information there, yeah. Yeah, but part of that mapping and compartmentalized, uh, the, uh, the compartmentalized mapping of the sensory system, we get the ratios of, that is the speed of interpretation, so how fast uh, a stimulus is moving or a horse moving towards a stimulus, how yep. fast that is. Yep. And in it's and in every sport, you know, every discipline, like we said a little bit earlier, has different requirements in that. And and the speed, it really is everything. Time is everything because the time of interpretation directly affects the the time and ability of performance mm-hmm. and focus for a horse to be able to uh, perform. You know, over a period of time, they have to be able to focus over a period of time. And the the, the more efficient the sensory system is the more time they can stay focused and the more performance time they can give you. And it, it, it's, it's very important to know because some horses, you'll be, you'll be looking really good for, you know, part of your performance and then they begin to fall apart. Okay. And the stress begins, stress begins to take over. And it's also important to understand the time ratio because you can take, you, you can adjust the speed of your training. So you can coach the horse through these things. If you, mm-hmm. if you know that you're, if, if, say you're approaching a jump and the horse is moving at whatever speed, but yet, yet they get close enough to it and they begin to slow down or, or they dodge it or they or they want to throw you off or they just stop, that kind of thing, you're probably going, the physical speed is probably going a little bit too fast for the psychology to interpret what's there. Okay. So uncertainty uncertainty kicks in and, of course, the basic, in, the, the basic instinct of survival kicks in. Mm-hmm. And so you can you can adjust the speed you can do it in two ways. You can exercise the psyche in, in, in one of two ways. You can adjust the speed. If you're in saddle, you can adjust the speed of your approach to an obstacle, and you can alternate different speeds so that the psyche has time to interpret. Or if the horse is just standing still, you yourself can be the stimulus and change your in and out speeds requiring different interpretation speeds. And then you can speed. You can begin to exercise those things and get the horse to be more efficient in that area. So you can actually... Increase the horse's ability to jump, for example, by the horse standing on the ground and you working in and out of these different compartments at different speeds because it's all about interpretation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you say there's two parts to each horse, is that the front back? Is it right, left? Or if you're going to talk about the two different parts to each horse, how the sensory system helps lead the way forward, tell us about what the two parts are and how that can help. when I when I reference the two parts of a horse, yeah. I, I talk about the physical horse and then the psychological horse. Okay. And, and I think the psychological horse is, is very endearing to us, and, and we love to give temperaments, the treats, and all those kind of things. Uh, but we 
sometimes overlook the fact that we need to to train and coach the psychology just as much as we develop the physical body of the horse. Mm-hmm. And to go out and, and physically condition your horse without mentally conditioning your horse at the same time or at different times or together or, or keeping in mind all the time that you need to exercise the horse's psychology to have it fit just like and fit and efficient as you do the, the physical course. And that starts with, you know, exercising the sensory system and getting this, the sensory system, which is the leading edge of whatever the horse does in the world, mm-hmm. uh, getting that as efficient and, and keeping the duration of the horse's focus up by different exercise te- techniques that you can do for the psyche. And so to me, that, that is the two parts of the horse that so many people, I think, um, we know it's there, of course, and we, we love the, the personality of our horses and all those things, but we, we tend to sometimes spend so much time on awesome saddles and, and great uh, equipment and, and getting the horse to look really good in, in, in pictures, and we forget to exercise the athletic part of the horse, which is the psychology. Okay. Okay. So when we're exercising the psyche, increasing the time, focus, ability, increasing. I'm just thinking about, you know, if you've got a jumping horse, say, and it goes well, jumps well, everything's fine, and then you put it in a speed round and you start cutting a few corners and the horse doesn't go so well. Is that because we need to um, increase the time of the focus ability? Is this what you're talking about? Yes. Increasing yes. duration, yes. distance, competitive performance. Okay, okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes, and, and when you exercise, when you exercise the, the sensory system, and you exercise, and you, you incorporate the, the mental part and me- mental training, you can increase the duration of focus. And when mm-hmm. you increase the duration of focus, you're increasing the time of performance. And if you're a racehorse, you're in, you're increasing the distance they can cover while while maintaining a focus. You know, there's 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 a physical athleticism, and then there's the competitive edge. You know, the psychology is where the competitive edge comes into play. Okay. And when the horse begins to get physically exhausted, the, the psychology is it needs needs to be still sharp and efficient and and you know um, re- responsive to the environment. Yes, when you talk about physical exhaustion and psychology, you've got to relate it to yourself. If you're physically exhausted, you're not thinking as clearly as what you are when you're feeling well. In yourself, so that's got to affect horses' performance. But different disciplines are going to require different ratios, aren't they? Speed, interpretation. Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. Yes, and, and and there's different training. There, there's different training protocols uh, from a psychological standpoint that you can employ, depending on your first, depending on, of course, how the how the horse uh, how the horse's map, you know, is is uh, put together. For them, uh-huh. and then based on that, you take that information, and it's like, okay, my goal is this. And first of all, you have to see if if you have the the, the framework to even achieve that mm-hmm. in, in the horse's psyche, because you know if, if it's a achievable goal, that's one thing. If it's a, if it's not a realistic achievable goal from a psychological standpoint, you're really going to going to be having a, a battle of attrition in your training program. And you know, so there's there's certain areas. Um, that you can have a very slow interpretational ratio on the obliques and in the rear of the horse, but have a very efficient, fast ratio in front of the horse, and that's great for certain things. If, if you're looking for um, a horse that's going to be making a lot of turns or you're bow racing or things like that, or you're going to be changing a lot of physical uh, positioning and leads and dressage and going around, you know, an arena, then the horse needs to be have a very good uh, sensory lead change ability mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. maintain body control and maintain the perfect posture and the perfect positions and the perfect gates and all those things while it's it's uh, interpreting the environment and anticipating the environment. Uh, and you know, some disciplines you can get away with certain things, and some yep. disciplines you can't. And that's why that's why it's important to know the horse's individual strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Okay, now this whole sensory mapping, the operating system, the machine, tell us a bit more about that because we'd have to know the operating system before we went and invested in the machine. Yeah, well, the, the sensory mapping, and it's something I actually, we, we offer, I uh, have a tutorial that mm. people can, can ask about and I can get you some information uh, if you're interested in oh, doing uh, do yes. yourself mapping, yeah. mapping for, for yourself, you know, and it, it's just... Um, it's, it's really important 
because you before you even make an investment, you need to you should be having this base information to apply to your decision making process. Mm-hmm. Because you know, there's nothing more frustrating than getting a really beautiful horse that's well bred, that's got the great great pedigree, and that all that stuff is great. And then when you get the horse, you realize that there's a lot of areas that the horse doesn't be able to either excel at, or they hit a plateau, or the training continues to get disrupted, and you're, you seem to be doing things over and over and over again Yep. Uh, every time you're in saddle, and it's very frustrating, and it may not be, you know, this, if it's not a bad horse, or a hard-headed horse, or a stubborn horse, there, there could be a definite issue with how they're interpreting something in their environment, and, and they're going to go back to the default of what keeps me safe, basically, uh-huh. and it's going to cause stress, and these things are hard to identify just by looking at the horse you know, with, with other horses, and if, you know, unless you actually do sensory testing, you're not challenging the horse's sensory system in a way that identifies these strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's really important because there's nothing more frustrating than uh, saving up a whole bunch of money or borrowing money or <laughs> going into a partnership with the horse that is not mentally equipped to reach the goal that you have chosen for that horse. Yes, yes, because there's been some very well-bred horses, you know, particularly race horses that are bred for the speed specifically, and they've just been flops. So this could have been identified before even purchase. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Especially with race horses, we we deal with this a lot. Well, you have a horse that's bred for distance, and you have a horse that has the body for distance, but you have the mind that can only stay focused or or handle uh, so much stress. And if if you want a horse that's going to run you know, a distance race or 10 plus furlongs and it, it takes, oh heck, you know, this is say two minutes to, to physically get there, but the psyche can only stay focused for one minute mm. before it starts to get, before it begins to get stressed out, you lose optimal efficiency. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when the, when the psychology begins to get exhausted, horses become um, more herd bound than otherwise. They, they begin. They begin to have to be taken along by their friends, and, and their decisions are not their own. Okay. Uh, and that's the difference. That's a big difference between horses that have leadership and horses that have dependencies. Yeah. It's the same thing as if you were looking for a dressage horse, and you know however many minutes of time that it takes to complete, you know your your performance. Mm. You better make sure that the psyche is, is equipped to stay focused even beyond that period of time, so that you have some mental strength in the reservoir before stress begins to kick in and compete against the horse for its performance. Yep, yep, now that makes sense. And I think even if you've got a horse that um, you're in one discipline and it's not going particularly well in that discipline, you could get an analysis and see if it's going to go better in another discipline. But what specific discipline? You know, you'd be able to sort of be able to be pushed in the right direction that maybe this horse is going to be a better barrel racer or a better show jumper or a better dressage horse or, or you know, it would just exactly. push you along. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, that, and I was just going to say we, we, do, we do a lot of those evaluations and, and even though I'm here in the States, we do a lot of stuff uh, online. There's a lot of online services that we offer that, that mm. helps because these things are so important and with, the, with of course, the magic of good video. Yes. Uh, we can, and get a lot of information about okay. someone's horse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great technology, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Yes, it is. Kerry, brilliant. Um, happy to talk to you. I think this is a very interesting subject. It's one that we haven't explored anywhere near enough. And I think, you know, you're obviously the person that we need to be talking about this whole mental profiling of horses and the whole behavioural aspect of horses. And, um, you know, to look at their potential, to look at what they could be good at because of what they're already telling you, regardless of the horse that they are, you're looking at the individual personalities. So thank you for coming on. I did want to also say, mm. if, if anyone's looking for more information, I, if you go to our website, thdbloodstock.com, and you go yep. to the blog section, okay. I, I have some research papers there on, on different topics. And on the blog section, you can find a full research paper on sensory soundness in the equine athlete that you might find quite interesting. Okay. I think all of your um, blog articles are interesting, but uh, particularly this one can have a look at. <laughs> all right. So if you didn't get that, that's thtbloodstock.com. Now, Kerry, is that the best place to contact you? Go there and use the contact page on the website. 
Yeah, that, that, that that's a good way to contact me. You can also find me, you know, we have a Facebook page, or you can just uh, contact me on other social media, uh, Twitter or LinkedIn, or, you know, Facebook's always good. Or yeah, just go to the website and, and send an email along, and, we'll, and I'll certainly get back to you. Perfect. All right, and if you need those details as well, just go to horsechats.com. This would be Kerry Thomas too, but if you go to horsechats.com and search for Kerry or search for Thomas, you'll find those details. Kerry, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing your information, sharing your um, your research and the results of your research with us. We do appreciate you coming on and look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, definitely. But, I appreciate you having me on and um, hope you guys are enjoying your summer. We're coming into spring over in this part of the world. Yes, yes. Well, we're, we're going to start to get colder soon. Not today, but we will start <laughs> to get colder soon. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government-accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses, or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below 